Hey folks, welcome to Regular Guy DIY. In my last video, we refinished some pretty unattractive laminate countertops with the Day Itch Spreadstone product. And it bears a resemblance to granite countertops. In fact, it even contains some real stone minerals in it. You can check out that video right here. Now that we've updated everything but the kitchen sink, it was time to, well, throw out the kitchen sink. So, let's go. Our old sink was looking rather tired and the double bowl sink just didn't work well for our family's use anymore. We donated the old sink and faucet to a local reuse store operated by Habitat for Humanity so that it could find a new home or a new kitchen. Of course the kitchen would be in the home but anyway. The replacement is this Kraus stainless steel sink with cutting board and drying rack. We will also be installing a commercial style faucet and a much less obnoxious sounding garbage disposal. But the new one's like, what? I can't hear anything. Because each kitchen sink and its associated plumbing will vary, this video is really intended to be used as a general guide rather than a step-by-step -step procedure. Replacing your sink and garbage disposal involves minor plumbing and electrical work. Precautions need to be exercised to avoid electrical shock or water leaks. Either one could be really bad. To keep up with my latest DIY projects, tips, and product reviews, mash that subscribe button right now. Go ahead and ring the bell so you don't miss a thing. Let's get started. The first step is to isolate power to the garbage disposal. So find the proper circuit breaker, turn it off, and then double check it by the local switch. Next, isolate the cold and warm water inlets to your faucet. Make sure they're nice and snug, but don't over torque. Next, disconnect the old inlet hoses to your faucet. There's gonna be residual water inside the hose. It's a good idea to have some extra towels or a bucket available to catch any extra runoff. Next, it was time to remove that old noisy garbage disposal. I started with the dishwasher drain, then I disconnected the garbage disposal drain. Then I was able to separate the garbage disposal from the sink drain. I removed the electrical cover on the bottom of the disposal and disconnected all the electrical wires. Get that junk out of here. Then it was time to remove the old plumbing. Since we're replacing a double bowl sink with a single bowl, the new plumbing layout is going to be different. Be sure to take some reference pictures of your old plumbing just in case you need them. Temporarily placed a rag in the drainage pipe to keep anything from going into it that wasn't supposed to. Now that everything was disconnected, it was time to slowly start working around the edge of the sink to make sure that it was carefully separated from the countertops. I was going to be refinishing these countertops and you can see the unfinished area surrounding the sink. So our kitchen sink was not going to be used for a couple of days during this process. It's times like that when you realize just how frequently you use that kitchen sink. Now that the sink was out of the way, I could finish cleaning up the top of the countertop and removing any residual silicone caulk. Then I did a test fit of the new sink just to see how everything lined up. I was pretty excited about the way things were looking. I used some scrap lumber to place under each edge of the sink to lift it from the work surface while I installed the drain. I had a little bit of fun using some plumber's putty to make sure that a nice drain seal was created. With the sink now turned on its side, I connected the bottom portion of the drain. Once the drain was snug, I turned it back over and cleaned up the residual putty. Then it was time to install our new garbage disposal. I started with the electrical connections first, attached the sink drain to the garbage disposal, then I began installing the kitchen faucet on the sink. 
I got a little over-enthusiastic and I didn't properly line up the faucet the way it was designed. As it turned out, that wouldn't be the only time I got ahead of myself. I'm installing the mount brackets here and as you can see, I have the faucet already installed. I should have done this earlier. Regardless, I was able to move forward, do another fit of the sink, and this time it was going to stay. Then it was time to crawl under the sink into the most uncomfortable position that I could find and snug down all of the brackets. This took a bit of time and patience. It was time to install the garbage disposal, reconnect the dishwasher drain, then after installing some new silicone tape on the water supply connections, I could reconnect both the hot and cold water lines. Installing the new drain piping was simply a matter of matching the same diameter piping that you had previously and finding the right connections to create a simple and clean look. With everything reconnected, it was time to open up the water supply valves and give it a go. Be sure to check all your water supply and drain piping to make sure that there's no leakage. We're very happy with the new Krauss stainless steel sink and the flexibility that it affords us, whether it's chopping vegetables or washing dishes. It is simply great. In my next and final episode of the Kitchen Makeover series, we're going to be installing subway tile, so be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps the video performance on YouTube so others can check it out too. I'm going to give a fist bump to my subscribers. If you're not one, hit that button so you don't miss out on the latest content. And ring that bell so you get notifications as soon as new videos drop. Thanks again for watching Regular Guy DIY. You got this.